Mass Effect Andromeda is a futuristic sci-fi game in the Mass Effect series. It is technically the fourth installment, but aims to be the long-anticipated follow-up to Mass Effect 3, the game that had an ending so bad that the developers received death threats, and according to someone I spoke to who claimed to be a former employee, they actually had to hire extra security guards to protect their building from potential arson and vandalism. This game was supposed to be the longed-for salvation and redeemer to the train wreck that was Mass Effect 3's ending. Unfortunately, Mass Effect Andromeda is the epitome of what a mismanaged game looks like. Parts of it flourish and hold to the expected quality of a AAA title in 2017, while other elements are so unbelievably horrible and unfinished that it's honestly hard to believe that the game was allowed to be published under EA's mantle in its current state. It is plagued with so many bugs and glitches that it gives Bethesda games a serious run for their money and it fails to provide even basic RPG elements, instead forcing you to cosplay as a sex-crazed astronaut who is obsessed with being a rubber Based, non-committal, stereotypically heroic, dry, forgettable lead who has the mental capacity of a middle schooler with ADD and the charisma of an overly ripened sun-dried butternut squash. The game also plays it safe and avoids any sort of risk or thought-provoking material in favor of bland, uninspired storylines that lack imagination. I did, however, somehow find myself enjoying the game as it went on. After the first 10 hours or so, the game transitioned from a mess into an enjoyable, albeit dull, game. But this may have just been because I became desensitized to it, I'm not really sure. I'll discuss all of these points in this video in as much detail as I can stomach. I can't discuss everything in this game, so I will be addressing only the elements that stuck out to me the most. I don't intend this to be a review, but rather a critique. They sound similar, but what I mean by critique is that I will be analyzing parts of the game I think could be improved while complementing the parts I enjoyed. This also will not be focused on concision, but rather on deliberation and discussion. It will be long, so I've included timestamps in the description below so that you can watch it in pieces by chapter if that suits you. Before getting into the game's narrative and gameplay, I think it's also important to acknowledge the abundance of bugs and glitches that plague Andromeda in its current state. I played the game on PS4 and PC. I was given the PS4 copy by a sponsor, but bought my own PC copy when my PS4 version of the game broke. More on that in a minute. Both versions suffered from a consistent lack of polish that, sadly, is becoming the new normal with large RPGs. Now, I'm writing this in early April of 2017, and so it is possible that all of these issues that I am about to list will have been fixed by the time that you are watching this video. But I think it's still important to mention these because the game shipped in this state. After all, you are paying for the version of the product they provide you at the time of purchase. Any Patches or updates after you've bought it are simply a gesture of goodwill on the developer's part in an attempt to keep you, the consumer, happy. I'm here to critique the product they provided me, their customer, at launch, and so I can't avoid mentioning the following glitches and bugs. Now, I want to be clear. I experienced all of these multiple times, often on PC and PS4. Some reviewers have said that they didn't experience any bugs at all when playing, and others have said that they experienced far more, and so it will differ from player to player. But these are the ones that I specifically encountered. These bugs included, but were not limited to, animation glitches, both big and small, Pop-ins, load times in excess of 60 seconds, random crew members spawning often on top of the player or in random locations that there's no way they could have arrived at, the ground simply not rendering, which I'll talk more about in a minute, crashing of the game, this happened on my PC causing my entire system to crash, audio desync is common and audio breaks I ran into three or four times during the multiplayer. The camera is also often broken, putting the camera in really weird places, making it impossible to see what's actually going on. Now, the ground that refused to render was by far the most severe glitch that I encountered. It was so severe that the game basically became unplayable. This was the glitch that I mentioned a moment ago when I said that I bought a PC copy because my PS4 copy broke. The game literally became unplayable, and I was helpless as to how to fix it in time for this video. And so I went out, spent another $60, only to have the problem resolve itself five days later. 
This is the main reason I'm making a fuss about the game's glitches, because it shows a lack of respect from Bioware and EA towards their customers. The unmitigated gall it would require to ship a product that is potentially so broken that it would stop working for five days is beyond me. Imagine buying a car from a major manufacturer, but after a day of driving it, the car stops running and can't leave your driveway. You call the dealer and explain the problem, expecting them to offer you a refund or a complimentary service to correct this seemingly unforeseeable event. But then you find out that the dealer and the manufacturer both knew that the car was broken all along. They knew that it might stop running or at the very least not perform at the level you expected, but they still sold it to you. They don't offer a refund, but instead they say that they will try to fix the problem in a few weeks or months. You would be irate, and rightly so, because the dealer and manufacturer gypped you. Here, it is no different. As a matter of principle, I have to condemn Bioware and EA for shipping this game that was not ready for launch. It needed another six months of polish, minimum, and the fact that it didn't get it says something really sad about these companies' respect for the consumer. Now please note that Bioware did come out two weeks after the game's release with a patch that supposedly fixed many of these issues. Now I personally have not verified this because the patch just came out today, but I would still argue that it's too little too late because they shipped the game in the aforementioned unacceptable state. But enough about that. What about the game itself? Well, to discuss the game, I'm going to split it into three very broad parts. The graphics, the narrative, and the gameplay. We'll begin with the graphics. This is the section that demonstrates how mismanaged Andromeda was during development. The game's environments are gorgeous, and I mean that. When everything is working the way it should, the worlds can be awesome. I caught myself on multiple occasions just staring at the sky or plants or wildlife on some of these planets. This is something that you can tell they really spent a lot of time working on, making each planet feel unique and different, which is why it's all the more heartbreaking when you see the character models. They're horrible. There's barely any movement above the nostrils on 95% of the people that you interact with, and it's so odd-looking that it often comes off as creepy, cringeworthy, or downright hilarious. The same is true for the alien characters, but because they are already designed to look and move in a stiff way, it looks believable. The humans? Not so much. This visual element paired with the often horrible writing, which we'll discuss later, often results in interactions that attempt to draw tears of sadness and empathy from the player, but instead just draw tears of laughter. Now, I've been told that these horrible facial animations are the result of a poorly made automated lip-syncing algorithm that reads off the dialogue being spoken and translates it into facial movements. The problem being, they use the same system as the aliens, essentially making the alien faces move and behave the same as the human faces, and vice versa, a mix that takes the player right into the uncanny valley with no hope of escape. The textures are bland, there's practically no subsurface scattering, which in my opinion is unacceptable in 2017, the eyes look like bowls of oatmeal, and the hair on these characters looks like a poorly woven Whoopi Goldberg wig made out of whole grain spaghetti. It's seriously like the management at Bioware said, eh, we'll be showing the environments in the trailers and at E3, so let's work extra hard on that. We'll come back to the character models later. But they never did, and they're still in their pre-alpha state. This idea of mismanaged priorities is something that is all over the game and will come up especially as we go through the gameplay. The first thing that you encounter when starting a new game is the revamped interface and menus. Now, I say revamped in quotation marks because whoever was in charge of this should be fired. It is so unbelievably convoluted and unintuitive that it took about 10 hours of gameplay before I became truly familiar with it. Now, it's possible that the UI is just above my level of comprehension and it's some great advancement that I can't conceive, but I have heard many others come to the same conclusion, and so I can't imagine it's just me that has an issue with the UI. Now, this interface could well have been salvaged, even in its current state, simply by explaining it to the player. But the game doesn't do that. It gives you a few button prompts and a half-assed explanation of each tab and then leaves the rest to you. Now, I'm actually a fan of games like Dark Souls that ask the player to learn the UI and menus without any sort of tutorial sequence, but just because I like those games doesn't mean I don't have a problem with this type of gameplay exposition. 
It's just a pet peeve of mine when a game practically expects you to go online just to find out how one of its system works. To me, it seems lazy. Dark Souls does it, Andromeda does it, and I disapprove in both cases. I know people who really don't care, and it may not bother you, but I just thought I'd put in my two cents. The character creation is also unfinished. My best evidence to demonstrate this point is just to ask you to look up gameplay of Andromeda, and you'll see that practically everyone's characters look the same. This is because the character creator heavily relies on base faces that act as templates, but there's really only four across both genders that don't look like simple Jack from Tropic Thunder. But this head movie makes my eyes rain. <laughs> as with most things in this game, it needed more time and more attention paid to it. Dialogue as a gameplay mechanic is clunky and suffers seriously from a bad case of Fallout 4 atosis. Basically, you're in a conversation, you want to say something, you see a prompt that echoes that same thing, you select that dialogue option, but instead of saying what you thought your character would say, writer says something completely unrelated that usually results in a cringe fest of poor attempts at witty lines. We've been failing for months, Ryder. Now that we have you, we have a chance out here. Wow, that's some laser focus. Yeah? Was it too much? Some people get intimidated. We need that sort of drive. I just hope I can keep up. You'll keep up. And I promise I won't tell if you don't. Now, this mainly has to do with writing, so we'll come back to it later, but I thought I'd bring it up. The game also pushes these stupid Sudoku puzzles on you early in the game, seemingly in an attempt to add some sort of mental activity to break up the mindless shooting. But all this results in is an annoying chore of a mechanic that the developers themselves seem to have gotten fed up with as development went on, because they are inexplicably absent from similar structures later in the game. It's seriously like as development went on, the developers themselves decided to abandon this mechanic and just stop including it in certain structures. These were a chore, and I was honestly relieved when they weren't featured at a tower or monolith. Bioware also puts a lot of items into the world for you to pick up for crafting and upgrades. I don't consider this a primary mechanic, but it is significant enough that I thought I would address it. Now, while I appreciate the intent and the quantity of items to be discovered, I really don't like that it breaks up the rhythm of the game whenever you search a bin or the body of a kept soldier. Andromeda could have really benefited from Fallout 4's searching mechanic, which I honestly loved. The ability to search containers or enemy bodies without having a stupid pop-up menu was great, and while I know it's nitpicky, I thought I'd bring it up. After all, this critique is as much about recommending improvements as it is criticizing bad mechanics. As for the combat, it's honestly awesome. It's the one part of the game that I'd go back in to replay. It's fast, fluid, and engaging. The multiplayer is also a great way to experience more of this in a condensed setting. Despite its repetitive matches and game modes, I did enjoy my time with it, and I guess you would as well. Now this brings up the enemy AI, which is honestly borderline retarded until you get to higher difficulties. When playing on normal, the game increases the challenge by adding more and more enemies, which I honestly enjoyed until I had narrowed it down to two or three ket when their stupidity really shined. There were times when I felt like I was in a slap fest with a mentally challenged kangaroo, something that was always immersion breaking when it happened. Everybody knows you never go full retard. On harder difficulties, at least in my playthroughs, the cat became more aware and much more credible threats. If you are a player that is looking for immersion through gameplay, specifically combat, I'd recommend playing on the hardest setting you can manage. Point being, the game's combat clearly had the most investment put in it of any element of this game. I have a feeling it was their focus on multiplayer that drove them to develop this mechanic so much more than others in the game, but that's just a theory and it may be completely wrong. And to finish out gameplay, I want to discuss companions. They also feel unfinished. Their AI is laughable at times. Not to mention the game pushes you to use them as your squad, but only gives you a few ways of commanding them. And even then, they rarely behave in the way you expected. However, this may all just be bugged for me and the system may work great for others. Either way, I felt that I never got to use this mechanic to its fullest potential, which is a real shame because it seems to have real potential, especially when considering other Bioware titles. Regardless, I'm hoping it's just bugged and that it'll be fixed in the near future, but that may be too optimistic on my end. 
Companions also can't be talked to unless the game wants you to do so. At one point, I wanted to talk to Korra, but I couldn't. I just ran into her repeatedly, but was never prompted or allowed to engage her. Again, it may be a bug, but it would have to be a game-wide bug because this is true of all the companions, at least the ones that I tried. This hints that it was a design choice or an oversight, which is either depressing or downright baffling. This is something that even Fallout 4 allowed, and that it did well. In saying this, I find myself drawing comparisons to Fallout 4 a lot in this video, and if you know me at all, you'll know that I'm not a fan of Bethesda's takes on the franchise, which makes it all the more damning when I say that Andromeda is even less competent a game than Fallout 4 managed to be. I could keep going, but I'd like to transition to the narrative now. Now, I won't be doing any sort of summation of the game other than a brief summary of the opening. The reason for this is because this video is already getting too long and because I don't think it would serve you, the viewer, well. If you find the story interesting, play the game. I won't spoil what narrative there is for you. Now, Mass Effect Andromeda, in the meta sense, is a story about discovery, adventure, and sex. Lots of alien sex. The game begins with your character, Ryder, waking up from some sort of cryogenic sleep. You've been out for 600 years and have traveled to a new galaxy in that time. Now, this is Bioware's way of dodging any sort of overlap with the original trilogy's narrative and branching plot lines. Simply go thousands of light years away and wait 600 years. Now, at first I viewed this as a cliche and predictable way of avoiding the earlier game's endings, but as Andromeda goes on, it actually uses this plot point to its advantage. You have conversations with characters who are expressing regret over joining the initiative, and they are often depressed at the thought that there's no going back, which makes sense. Even if you, as the new Pathfinder, decided that Andromeda wasn't worth it and that humanity needed to return back to the Milky Way, it wouldn't do any good. Because by the time you got back, 1,200 years would have passed. This gave a lot of context to the characters' emotions, and I was honestly glad to see that they committed to the plot throughout. In general, the plot serves its purpose. It's not outstanding or revolutionary, but it's somewhat believable, or at least enough that you can accept what's going on and play the game. My one caveat to this would be to say that the Ket are a stupid enemy and Archon is a lame main villain, at least in my opinion. I truly believe the game would have been better served had they removed them from the game entirely and replaced them with different factions of enemies based on the cluster you're in. Perhaps they could have also had a viability bar that their AI is making moves to fill and so it essentially turns the game into a tug-of-war conflict over a planet's resources and the rights to settle there. Now, these could have been added in addition to the Ket, but I really don't like the Ket as a whole. I know this is biased, and I'm saying that now to be clear. I don't exactly know why, but I find the Ket cringy, Star Trek-esque opponents who are incredibly predictable and just do bad guy stuff just, well, because they're bad guys. There's no sudden twist where the Ket are unexpectedly sympathetic or where you rethink your decisions. I just don't like them, but that's just my opinion and yours may be different. Following that vein, let's discuss player freedom, specifically in the narrative sense, and RPGs as a whole. The term RPG implies that something is a role-playing game. It is a game that lets you play the role you choose to and interact with the world as you wish. It is not synonymous with a game that has some stats and customizable armor. It seems like every game that comes out nowadays is a so-called RPG, but Really, they're all just normal games that are taking advantage of an ambiguous descriptive term. So let me say this. According to the definition I just gave, Mass Effect Andromeda fails as an RPG. It fails because it doesn't fulfill the whole definition. Andromeda wants you to be the hero, the virtuous savior, and the one who sleeps with anyone or anything in sight. This was incredibly frustrating for me because I enjoy role-playing as a villain on my second playthrough through most big RPGs like this. It's really fun in Skyrim, for instance, because you can travel from village to village massacring masses and the game allows it. Andromeda? It doesn't. You don't even have to go as far as trying to kill innocent NPCs to see this. Look at the dialogue you have with key characters. There is never, and I mean never, an opportunity to do something horrible. The closest you can come is being rude or mean to a squad member or some other alien, uh, something that is practically forgiven immediately, as soon as it's said. 
In general, the game avoids lasting conflict like the plague. Everything just works out soon after it's established as a conflict. Take, for instance, one of the first characters you meet, Korra. Korra was a crew member of your father. She was technically next in line to become Pathfinder, but after your father named you the Pathfinder, she was pushed aside. This had the potential to be a major plot point, where this close confidant of your father's and someone who is now on your crew now resents you because you took the very position for which she had been working for most of her life. The problem is that this is never explored. It is mentioned briefly in a short dialogue sequence right after your father's death, and the next time you hear about it in any detail is when the problem is resolved. There's no quests where she disregards your orders in favor of her own, which frankly would be reasonable. After all, she has way more military experience than Ryder. There's no expositing moments where she debates her purpose in the initiative without the Pathfinder ship. She never even expresses these feelings outside of a poorly acted and visually painful dialogue sequence where she speaks with just enough frustration that you can determine something is wrong, but without any amount of animosity that could be construed as significant disdain. A friend and mentor who trained you to be a Pathfinder. I said I wouldn't get in the way, and I meant it. But I prepped for years as your father's second. Then he chooses you, an untrained Pathfinder, and all this mess to fix? The hell was he thinking? Is this going to be a problem, Cora? I don't want a rival, just answers. It, it's done. Best I can do now is be your second. Keep your father's mission alive. This is what I mean when I say that this game plays it safe and doesn't have the balls to actually employ conflict between characters. Bioware didn't want to potentially alienate a hot character to the point where the player wouldn't want to or wouldn't be able to bang her because that's what they see as crucial. And so they made it impossible to actually have some sort of hate between these major characters. There's no real conflict. It has players and resolution, but it has no conflict. As for the dialogue, it is written in such a bland way that it would make Wonder Bread taste like curry. There are complex emotions and relationships implied, but they are almost never communicated to the player in a way that would warrant any sort of attention. In other words, the game does such a bad job of explaining what is going on that you, as the player, wouldn't even know if someone hates you even after an extensive dialogue sequence with that character. Now, there were moments in the game where I felt like a character should be mad at me or, at the very least, be annoyed with me, but I could never tell because the voice acting and the lines were just... blah. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. Yes, that's an actual line in the game. And what makes it even more baffling is that this comes from Addison, who is a character you meet early in the game and interact with a lot throughout the campaign. And this line comes in the first couple hours of gameplay, depending on your pacing. It was seen by Bioware's QA department, whatever that may have been, but it was ignored, just like so many other things in the game. I could keep going, but this video is getting really long and I want to cut it off here. In closing, Mass Effect Andromeda is heartbreaking for me. I know this video was almost exclusively me criticizing it, but I really did enjoy my time with the game after I had trained myself to ignore the glitches and all the broken crap. Now, it may have just been that I spent so much time with this game that I developed some sort of Stockholm Syndrome. I'm honestly not sure at this point. But my point is, I can see the foundation for a great game within this mess. There were good parts of it, but the game was rushed to release to meet a deadline, leaving it unpolished and unfinished. As much as I had hoped Andromeda would be the next great game, it just wasn't. I'm sure six months from now it will be all patched up and will be well worth your time, but as it stands, it isn't. It's an insult to your intelligence and to your rights as a consumer that EA thought that they could get away with this release. For this reason, I recommend that you don't purchase this game as a matter of principle. If you really want the game, wait until later this year when it's all patched and fixed up, and preferably when it's also on sale. But that's all I have to say about the game. This was a new video format, and so I'm really interested in hearing what you guys thought about it. So please leave those thoughts down in the comments below. I'll read them all, and if you want more videos like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. It would really, really help me out. But with all that said, thanks for watching.
Hey, did you like that? Well, that was just an extra of the full show that I do every weekend. So if you haven't seen it already, make sure to check it out. Add card things popping up everywhere and subscribe if you haven't already.